Welcome to your complete beginner's guide for the DJI Mic 2. Now this is a small compact wireless microphone system that makes it super easy to get audio for a variety of situations. So in this video, I'm gonna go over everything about this transmitter and receiver combo so that you have a complete understanding of how this works and how you can use it to get the best audio when you're out filming. Now let me just give you a quick overview of what you're gonna learn in this video. So first we're gonna go over the devices themselves, the receiver and the transmitter, and I'll go over all the buttons. Then we're gonna dig into the software on the receiver so that you can see all of the features that you have available in the DJI Mic 2 receiver. And at the end, we'll talk about some ways to use this transmitter receiver combo to get the best audio when you're out filming. So if you're ready, let's get into it. So if you have the two transmitters and one receiver combo, you're also gonna have the charging case. And the charging case is used for two different reasons. One, is it's gonna hold your transmitters and your receiver and the connections for USB-C and your lightning port. Also, it's gonna charge all of your devices. And this charging case has a built-in battery. So this case will charge both transmitters and your receiver two times when it's fully charged. And it takes a little over two and a half hours to be able to fully charge the case. And on the case itself, you'll see that there's a USB-C on the back, that's how you're gonna charge it. And then on the front, there's a little clip and this is how you're gonna open it. So with the updated design of the charging case from the DJI Mic 1 to the 2, there's now this clip on the front so that no matter what you're doing, the transmitters and the receiver will never fall out. So it's just a little lock to be able to hold everything in here snug and to be able to keep everything nice and safe. So you just press on the button, open up the case, and as soon as you open your charging case, you'll see that your transmitter and your receivers will turn on. And displayed on the screen of your receiver is how much time you have left recording on each one of your transmitters. And then it also shows the battery of each of the transmitters and the receiver. So anytime you want a quick indication of how much charge you have or how much data you have left on each transmitter, you just flip this open, the screen will pop on, and then everything's displayed right there. Also, if you need to link your transmitter to your receiver, all you need to do is put them in the case and leave it open. And then a little indication will pop up on screen that says linking, and then they'll be automatically linked. So that's an easy way to pair your transmitters to your receivers if they ever fall out of sync or if you have another device that you wanna link. So this kit has two, and I also have an additional one for my DJI Osmo Pocket. And so if I wanted to use this one with this receiver, well, I could link it easily by putting it in the case, it automatically links. For any reason you need to change out your microphones, you can easily link it by just putting it in the case. Now with each receiver for the DJI Mic 2, it can only link to two transmitters at one time. So you can't link more than two transmitters to one receiver at any point. Now also when you flip open the case and you have the screen turn on, this powers on each device. So when you pull them out, they're already powered on. You don't have to push anything to turn on the transmitters or the receiver. As soon as you see that screen displayed, when you flip open the case, you can pull these out of the case and the transmitters and the receivers will continually stay on. And whenever you have a low battery, you'll just stick them back in the case. Now also with the charging case, there is the soft case and you'll wanna use this soft case to carry your windscreens for the, each transmitter. And also it's a good place to store your cable or any other things that you might need with the DJI Mic 2. And the cool thing is the charging case fits nicely in the soft case so you can keep everything in a small compact case and everything's in one spot so you never have to go looking for something in your backpack. All right, so next let's just go over what you're gonna find on the transmitters. So looking straight down on your transmitter, this whole top is where your microphone is located. So in each transmitter, uh, there's a microphone built in. So you could just keep the transmitter anywhere and record your audio. Now you'll also see a hole at the top. This is where you're gonna put an external microphone. So if you are using something like the DJI lavalier mic, well, you can plug it in on the top here, and that's how you use the lavalier for your audio versus the microphone that's built into the transmitter. Now on one side, you'll find a USB-C and a record button. The USB-C is, is gonna be how you can charge the transmitter when it's not in the case, and this is also how you connect directly to a computer. So when you're backup recording on the transmitter itself, you'll plug this into your computer and you can pull all the files off. Now the red button on the side is your record button, so that's how you turn on the backup recording, or if you're using this as a standalone microphone or a Bluetooth microphone, you just click this red button and it starts the audio recording. Now on the other side, you're gonna see a light at the top. This is gonna be an indication light and it's gonna change from green to red to blue depending on which mode that you're in. Now underneath that is a link button. So this is how you can pair the DJI Mic 2 transmitter to your receiver or 
if you're going to link it to a Bluetooth device, you could directly link your transmitter. So say, you're, so if you want to connect it to your phone or any other device that can connect via Bluetooth, you can link it by using this linking button on the side. Now I'll show you how to pair the transmitter to different devices after this section. So underneath the pairing button, you'll find a power button and you press and hold this to turn on the transmitter if it's not already turned on. Or if it's turned on and you want to turn it off, you press and hold the power button and you'll feel a vibration if your haptic feedback is turned on and the transmitter will turn off. So you don't need to use the case to be able to turn these on and off. You could just use the power button on the side. Now, if you press the power button once, it turns on the intelligent noise canceling. You press it again and it turns that feature off. And I'll explain that a little bit later. Now on the bottom, you'll see that there's some contact points. This is what connects to the case when you plug it in. And then on the back, you have your clip and there's also a strong magnet. So now, one other thing is that your indicator light can be turned off in your software so that you have no lights blinking on this when you're recording. And I'll show you that once we get into the software section of this video. Now also with the transmitters, you get a windscreen. Now this windscreen is built specifically for the DJI Mic 2 and you'll see that there's a little piece of plastic hanging down and you'll put that into the microphone jack on the transmitter. So when you plug this in, you'll want to press down until you hear a click and then the windscreen should be on there snug and there's no chance of it falling off. The purpose of the windscreen is to get rid of wind sounds. So if there's any wind hitting the microphone, you'll hear like a and your audio is not going to sound that good. So if there's any breeze, if there's any sort of wind movement or anything like that hitting the microphone, you'll want to make sure to put the windscreen on. This fuzzy top hat thing that you get cuts out all of that sounds. So it's going to be much cleaner when you're using the windscreen. So I've got a fan to simulate wind sounds. Let me show you how this works. All right, so we're going to test what it sounds like with the windscreen on and off. So I have the fan turned on. You can hear it in the background, so it's audible. And it's also the wind is directly hitting the microphone. And so this is what it sounds like when you have wind hitting this microphone without having the windscreen on. You're going to hear this constant just going on while you're using this microphone in this way. And so now this is the audio that you can get with the windscreen on. The microphone hasn't changed positions. The wind is the exact same. And you can hear how much cleaner the audio is with the windscreen on the DJI Mic 2. And so when you're out filming, you'll want to use the windscreen if there's any sort of breeze or any chance of wind because it's just going to make your audio sound that much better. And all you have to do is put this little windscreen on and then you get cleaner audio. Now I'm just going to pause the video for one second and just ask you to go down and hit that subscribe button. On this channel, I help creators with their gear and also I teach you the skills that you need to make better videos. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. All right, let's get back to the video. Now for the next section, I wanna show you how you can pair your transmitter to different devices. So there's two ways that you can pair your transmitter. You can either pair it to your receiver, or if you wanna pair it to Bluetooth devices, you're gonna unlink it to your receiver and you're gonna link it to your Bluetooth device. So you can have your transmitter paired to two different devices and be able to use them interchangeably. So you can have it linked to your receiver and then you can also have it linked to your Bluetooth device. Now you'll switch between Bluetooth and the receiver linking by your record button on the side of your transmitter. So when you press and hold your record button for three seconds, the indicator light on the side of the transmitter is going to change. When it's green, that means it's gonna be in the mode that's linking to your receiver. Press and hold your record button for three seconds. It'll go into a blue blinking mode. And now this is in Bluetooth mode. So if you have not paired a Bluetooth device yet, what you'll do is press and hold the record button for three seconds, get into your Bluetooth mode with the blue blinking light on the side. And then you're gonna pull up your device that you're gonna to link to and press and hold the link button for two seconds. You'll see the indicator light on the side start blinking faster and then it will pop up on the menu of the device that you're using. So I'm using my iPhone and it's right here. And then I can connect to it and I can start using this as a microphone for my phone. Now, if you don't wanna be in Bluetooth mode and you wanna go back to using your receiver, you'll just press and hold the record button for three seconds again. And the little light on the side of the transmitter is gonna turn green. Now, if it's not linked to your receiver, you're gonna either have to put it back in the case to pair them automatically, or you'll do it manually. And to do it manually, what you wanna do is swipe down on the menu, go to your receiver settings, swipe all the way to the right to where it says link device, click link device. And then what you're gonna do is click link, 
confirm, and then press and hold the link for two seconds. And there'll be a little indication that pops up that says transmitter one or transmitter two is now linked. And then when you go back to your home screen, you'll see that it's linked because there's gonna be bars bouncing around on the receiver. And I'll explain everything on the screen in a minute. But that's how you go through and you compare this transmitter to both Bluetooth devices and the receiver. And whenever you wanna switch between them, you just press and hold the record button for three seconds and it switches from Bluetooth to the receiver mode and you could switch back and forth if that's if you're using multiple devices. So if you're someone who's using your phone sometimes but then you're also using your camera and this is mounted on your camera, well you could easily switch back and forth your transmitter without having to reconnect anything. So that's a really cool feature that's built into the DJI Mic 2. For this next section, let's go over everything that you're gonna find on the receiver itself. So the receiver is fairly simple and a lot of the functionality is gonna come from the screen that you're gonna see on the front here. This screen is a touch screen. Everything's done through swipes. Now there's also a couple other buttons on this device. So on the front, you're gonna see this wheel with the red ring that's the same that you see on the transmitter. Now on one side, you're gonna find a power button and this is just like on the transmitter. You press and hold this to turn the device on or to turn the receiver off. Now on the other side, you're gonna see two different ports. One is for headphones so that you can monitor what you're recording without having to go through your camera. And the other is to link directly to your camera's input. And these are both 3.5 millimeter ports. Now the out is clearly indicated with an orange ring. So you never get these two confused. Your gray one is always gonna be for your headphones if you wanna monitor your audio directly using the receiver. And the orange one is always gonna go to your camera. Now on the back of this device, you'll see your con, which hook into the charging case. And then also you'll find a USB-C. You're gonna use this USB-C to charge the receiver independently if you don't have the case. And also if you need to update the receiver, you'll plug this directly into your computer. Now for both of these devices, the update process is fairly easy. You'll plug in using the USB-C on the back of the receiver or on the side of the transmitter. And then what you'll do is just pull on the .bin file onto either the receiver or the transmitter. And then when you unmount it and unplug it from your computer, it will start updating automatically. So if there ever is an update with new features, you'll just wanna make sure to update it because once in a while, there'll be some new features coming out for this microphone. Just as with the original DJI mic, there was a few updates after the initial launch. And then on the bottom of the receiver, you'll see a cold shoe mount. So this is how you're gonna hook this onto your camera. And you could face this either direction. So if you're someone who's vlogging, you'll want to face the screen towards you so you could see your levels and you can also have all your features easily accessible. And if you're behind camera, you'll want to flip it around and have the screen facing backwards. And with the style of this cold shoe mount, you can put this on any direction. So if you even wanted to have it facing towards the side of your camera, you could have it face either direction towards the side. It's just a square attachment and it can hook onto anything. So that's everything about the receiver itself. The rest of the features are all packed into the actual software and it's it's all going to be done through touch screens and using this front dial on the front of the device. So let's dig into all of the features that you have in the DJI Mic 2. So now let's go over everything that you're going to find on the receiver screen. So right now you'll see that I have everything turned on. And so I have both transmitters turned on and the receiver turned on. And this is the screen that you're going to see. On the left will be your left transmitter. On the right will be your right transmitter. And you'll see that as I'm talking, the levels are going to be bouncing up towards the left. So the green indicator is your levels. And if I talk really close to one of these levels, you'll see that it's peaking all the way to the right. It goes all the way to orange to red. And so when it's in the red, you're clipping your audio, it's too loud. And so ideally when you're using this microphone, you wanna be seeing those green levels just hitting the orange and not going too deep into the orange. But these indicators will always be on the front of the screen. So you could always see both transmitters when you're using two at one time. Now, if I was to turn off one of these transmitters, you're gonna see that now only one transmitter is showing. So if you only are using one transmitter at a time, you'll see a bigger screen of that transmitter and your levels all the way across the bottom. I'm gonna pull the other transmitter out again so we could go over, over everything that you're seeing on screen right now. So in the upper left-hand corner, it tells you which mode that you're in. And there's three different modes that you can put these microphones into. It could be stereo mode, mono mode, or mono with a safety track. So stereo mode means that both the left and the right channel are being recorded independently. And so when you're using two transmitters, each transmitter is gonna be on a separate channel. So when you're listening to headphones, you could think of the two channels as being each ear. And so if I talk into one microphone, you would only hear it out of one ear and vice versa. The reason that you would use this is if you want that ability to be able to edit each transmitter independently in your editing software. So it gives you more flexibility when you get into your edit to be able to bring your levels up and down when you're editing. Also, if there's any issues with one of the transmitters, it doesn't ruin the audio for the other transmitter 
when you take it into your editing software. And so when you're editing your stereo track, then you'd split it apart into two separate tracks, and then you'd be able to edit them independently. Now, mono with a safety track is the same thing as mono, except for the second track is recorded lower than the main track. And the reason that you'd wanna do this is if you're in a super loud environment and there's a lot of dynamics in the audio and you just want a safety track in case the audio gets too loud. So there might be some situations where that safety track makes sense, but for me personally, if I'm working with two people, I'll just use the stereo mode so I could always edit each audio track independently. If I'm working with myself, I just use the mono mode. Just depends on your workflow and what you need to do and how much control you want when you get into your editing software. Software. Now on the right hand side of your screen, you're going to see a one and a two. This is for the two different transmitters that you have hooked. Now there's some bars going up to the left. This is your signal strength from the receiver to the transmitter. So if you're to walk far away with this transmitter, you'll see the signal strength going down. These transmitters have a range of a 250 meters and that's line of sight. So as soon as you go behind a building or there go, there's something comes between you, or even if you put this on your back, there's a chance that the audio is gonna cut out. And that's one of the reasons why you'd wanna use the transmitter with the backup recording, because anything recorded on the transmitter won't cut out. The only thing that's cutting out is the signal between the transmitter and the receiver. So if you're using this with your camera and you have it plugged in, you're gonna see a dropout on your camera. But on the transmitter itself, it's still gonna be recording and then you can link up your transmitter audio later as your backup and be able to always have audio even though the signal was cut out between the transmitter and the receiver. That's why you wanna use the backup recording on these transmitters whenever you're out filming, just so you always have a backup and you never lose your audio. Now next to the one and the two, there's a battery indicator and this is for the receiver. Now, when we go down to each transmitter, they have a separate box for each. And in the upper right-hand corner of each transmitter, there's also a battery icon, and this is for the battery on the transmitters themselves. Now, underneath that is your levels, and then next to your levels is a little speaker icon. So you can actually mute the transmitters if you need to for any reason. And when you mute the transmitter, you'll see a line go through this little speaker icon, and you won't see any levels bouncing on the meter. So you just wanna make sure whenever you're recording that there are levels bouncing and you don't see the slash through the speaker. But if for any reason you need to mute these transmitters, you could easily do that and it stops the transmission between the transmitter and the receiver. Now also when you mute the transmitter, you'll see a red indicator light pop up on the transmitter itself. And the red indicator is a little bit dim. So there's two red indicators that show up in the same spot. One is for when the backup recording is turned on and one is for when the mute is turned on. The one for the mute just is a little bit more dimmed down than the recording light. And so if you're to press the backup recording on your transmitter, you'll see a brighter red light pop up. And if the muse turn on, it's more dimmed down. So that's everything that you're gonna see on the screen until we start turning on some additional features. And as we go through these, I'll show you where they pop up on this home screen. Now I'm gonna pause the video one more time real quick, but if you're someone who wants to get some creative looks out of your footage or you shoot in log, well, I have a whole set of LUTs that's gonna help you through this process to make it super easy to color grade your footage and do it super fast. And those are what I use to color grade all of my videos and what you're seeing on this video as well. So after you're done watching about the DJI Mic 2, and make sure you head down to the description and check out my link for my set of adventure LUTs. They work in a variety of settings. All right, let's get back to it. Now with this microphone, you can either swipe down for your menus or you could swipe up underneath each transmitter and that's a specific menu for that transmitter. So let's start with the transmitter menus. So if you swipe up on the left side, that's gonna pull up transmitter one. Now if you swipe up on the right side, it's gonna pull up transmitter two. Now if you only have one of these connected and you swipe up anywhere, it's gonna pull up the menu for that specific transmitter. So just make sure if you're trying to bring this menu up that you do it on the left or the right depending on which transmitter you wanna change the settings. So let's swipe up on the the left side. So you're gonna see three options for this transmitter menu. On the far left is your record. So let's click record. Now you're gonna see on the transmitter itself, the light is red. And then on the receiver, there's now a red box around that specific transmitter. And so that's an indication saying that the backup recording is turned on and you're recording audio. So you could turn on the backup recording by swiping up and clicking the record button or by pressing the record button on the side of your transmitter two ways to turn on this backup recording. Now also when you swipe up, you see the speaker icon. You click this, it'll have a slash through it, and that's gonna mute 
the transmitter. When you need to unmute, you just swipe up and turn off the mute. Now on the far right side, you'll see this little waveform. And right now mine has a slash through it. And this is the intelligent noise canceling. So this is a new feature with the DJI Mic 2 that's gonna give you better audio when you're out filming. And it's specifically focused on audio for vocals. So you can either turn this on by swiping up and turning on the intelligent noise canceling, or if your transmitter is turned on, you can press the power button just once, just a quick press, and that turns on and off your intelligent noise canceling option. So if you ever need to do it just on the transmitter itself, one press on the power button, or you swipe up, and then you could turn on this feature. And so what this is gonna do is isolate vocals to give you better audio. So if there's any sort of background noise going on, it's gonna use some noise reduction to be able to get rid of any of those sounds in the background and really focus in on vocals. And let me show you what the difference is with this intelligent noise canceling. So I put the microphone on my chest with the windscreen on, and I'm gonna turn on the fan one more time. So now we have wind hitting the microphone and with the windscreen, it's cutting out the wind sounds, but you're still gonna hear the fan in the background. So let's turn on this intelligent noise canceling. So now this is with the intelligent noise canceling turned on, and this is gonna really focus in on vocals. So this background noise that's consistent, you're not gonna hear it as much. It's gonna be a much cleaner audio track. Let me show you one more time. So this is with the intelligent noise canceling turned off. You can hear the background noise, you can hear this fan, and then let's turn this back on. And now this is what the audio sounds like with this feature turned on. So if you are someone who's vlogging or you're doing a stand up to camera or you're doing an interview with someone and there's some background noise, well, instead of doing your audio editing in your software, you could put this feature on and you could cut out some of that sound in the background to just give you a cleaner audio track. And so those are the three buttons when you swipe up to either transmitter, they're the exact same. Now the next menu that you have on your receiver is your swipe down. So let's swipe down. And the first level, you're gonna see a few options. You're gonna have your receiver settings, your transmitter settings, and just your general settings. And so each one of these is an additional menu that's specific to the receiver, transmitter, or just general settings overall for your whole connection. So let's click receiver settings. And then the first option, you'll see this ability to change between stereo and mono. So you'll click this button and you'll just tap on the left side to switch between stereo, mono, and mono with a safety track. And when you're in stereo mode, you can flip transmitter one and transmitter or two to be on the left and right channel or the right and left channel. So however you want that set up, you can change it here in your menus. So let's swipe up and it goes back a menu. So if we swipe to the right, the next option is for recommended camera settings. So every camera is different when you plug the receiver into the camera. And there's some settings that you wanna set up in terms of the volume going out of the receiver that's gonna best suit your camera. You could set this up yourself manually or you can go in here and there are some different cameras that are automatically set up. So you could click here, go to brand. I'm gonna go to Sony because I shoot with Sony and then I'm gonna find my camera model. So let's say I'm using my a7S III, turn that on. And now when you go back to the main screen, you'll see that there's a plus nine icon up next to my stereo mode. And so what this means is that it's boosting the signal nine decibels coming out of the out port that's gonna be going into the receiver. So this is an automatic setting that DJI has set up for the a7S III. And you don't have to use this camera setting to be able to change this output. This is just a setting that DJI has set up to try and make it a little bit easier depending on which camera you're working with. And so I'm gonna turn this off and I'll show you how to do this manually. So the next option when you swipe right is your receiver gain. And when it pops up, it's gonna show at zero decibels. Now you can either boost the signal 12 decibels or you can lower the signal by 12 decibels. And that's either bringing up the volume or bringing down the volume. And you have this option depending on your camera setup. If the audio is coming in too loud, you'd wanna bring this down. But if it's too quiet in your camera, then you wanna bring this up. And so depending on what you're getting in your camera, you're gonna use your receiver gain to be able to bring that up or down to be able to get proper audio when you're recording on your camera. Now, if you wanna change your receiver gain, you don't have to go into this advanced menu. So let's go back to the main home screen. To change your receiver gain, you could use the dial that's on the front of the receiver. Press in once on this button, and then you'll see a yellow box is highlighted around the top half of your receiver, and you'll just spin the dial to the right and you'll see that the gain is going up. And when you spin the dial to the left, you'll see that the gain is going down. So you could go to the same negative 12 or positive 12, depending on how much you need to boost or bring down your signal. All right, so let's go back into the receiver settings. So next to the receiver gain is your volume. And this is the volume when you plug into your headphone port. So if your levels all look fine on your meters, but you're not hearing enough volume in your headphones, you can go in here and boost that signal going out to your headphones. 
could also bring it down if it's too loud. So you wanna make sure that when you're listening, if it's too loud or too quiet, that it's headphone volume and not your transmitters recording too low or too high. Now next to your headphone volume is your power camera on off simultaneously. So when you turn this on and you have it plugged in to your camera, whenever your camera turns off, it's gonna automatically shut off the receiver. And when you turn your camera back on, the receiver is gonna automatically power on. Now, this doesn't automatically turn off your transmitters. So these you still have to turn off manually. So this camera turn on off simultaneously is just for the receiver when it's plugged into a camera. Now the next option is for auto off. Now when this is turned on, if your transmitter's left for 15 minutes and it hasn't been connected to the receiver or it hasn't been recording, this will automatically shut off. So it's just a safety feature to make sure that you don't lose your battery and just accidentally leave these on for a long period of time. Now, and then the last option is your link device, and this is how you're gonna pair to your transmitter if they ever become unpaired and you're not using your charging case. Now let's go back a menu and let's go over to your transmitter settings. And the first setting that's gonna pop up is your low cut filter. And a low cut filter basically cuts out any low frequencies. So if there's any low rumbles or any low sounds that are in your audio, this helps cut them out to give you some cleaner audio. So in the DJI Mic 2, you have a low cut filter that also you have that intelligent noise reduction as two different filters that you can use when you're recording to try to get better audio. Now the next option is for your transmitter gain. And so the transmitter gain affects the gain of the transmitters themselves, not the receiver. So there's a receiver out gain that, that goes to your camera, but also you could change your transmitter gain. So if you're with someone who's talking really loud and it's really over the top, well then you can bring down your transmitter gain and make the transmitter recording a little bit quieter. Or if you're working with someone who's really soft spoken and you can't hear them as well, or maybe there's a little bit of distance between your subject and the actual microphone, well you could turn up the transmitter to try and boost it to get more audio. Just know when you're boosting your signal on your transmitter, you're gonna get more background noise because it's boosting the recording so everything's gonna get a little bit louder. And you could go, and when you turn on your transmitter gain, you could go back to your main home screen and you'll see that there is now a plus 12 icon to my left transmitter. Now the other way to do your transmitter gain is by using the dial on the front of the receiver. So you'll click down until the yellow box goes around which transmitter you want to change and then you'll roll left to bring down the transmitter gain and you'll roll it right to bring up the transmitter gain. So you can go negative 12 and positive 12. And so when one's at positive 12 and one's at negative 12, you could see that on the right hand side, it's way too hot and it's going into the red. Whereas on the left hand side, it's recording lower than it should be. And so when I change these back to zero, you'll see that the numbers disappear, but also the audio is now evened out and both of them are hitting around the yellow. So you could either change your transmitter gain in the deeper menu, or you could just use the button on the front of the receiver to be able to change it. Now the next option is for 32-bit float recording. And when you turn this on, on the main home screen, you're gonna see 32BF pop up next to your stereo. So 32-bit float recording gives you more data and it allows you to record at higher levels and lower levels without ruining your audio. So for me personally, I always use the 32-bit float recording when I'm doing backup audio. This way, if there ever is an issue, I have more range to work with my audio and I'm able to bring it up higher and I'm able to bring down some of the high part and the audio won't be distorted. Now with your 32-bit float recording, it does take more data. So each one of these transmitters can record 15 hours without the 32-bit float recording. When you turn on 32-bit float, you could record just over 11 hours with each transmitter. So you do lose some time for your ability to record. However, 11 hours is still a lot of time. And so very rarely do you really need more than 11 hours when you're out filming. But if you do, you'll just wanna turn off that 32-bit float recording. I'm gonna leave mine on because I wanna record 32-bit float whenever I'm using these transmitters. It's a huge advantage of working with the DJI Mic 2 and one feature that gives you a lot more flexibility when you're in editing to always have clean audio. Now the next option in your transmitter settings is your record stop lock. When this is on, the record button on the transmitter will work to turn on your backup recording, but then if you click it, it's not gonna turn it off. So the only way to turn off your backup recording is to go into your menu on the receiver and turn it off that way. This is a safety feature to make sure that someone doesn't accidentally turn off their backup recording by pressing the button on the side of the transmitter. So if you're ever working with talent or you're working with an interview and you just wanna make sure that they don't accidentally hit the record button after you've turned on the backup recording, turn on your record stop lock and that way, Every time this starts recording, you can't press anything on the transmitter itself to turn off this recording. You can only turn it off by swiping up on the transmitter and turning off your recording here. Now the next option in your transmitter settings is your auto record. So with this feature auto record, 
every time you turn on your transmitter, it's gonna automatically start recording. So there is no chance that you'll miss a backup recording unless your transmitter is turned off. So this is a feature that you might wanna use if you're in a situation where you just wanna make sure you never lose the audio and every time you power on a transmitter, it just starts the recording. So you might wanna use this if you're moving fast or if you just wanna make sure that you never forget to turn on this backup recording. Personally, I've used this on different shoots where I know I don't wanna ever lose the audio because I do rely on the backup recording. When I shoot some fitness content, I know I'm gonna use the backup recording because when people are doing something like yoga and they lay down on one of these transmitters, it will cut out. Because of the clear line of sight, these will cut out at different times. And when I've shot fitness for some of my clients, that's one area where they really do cut out a lot. And so in the time when I'm working with clients and shooting fitness videos, I always make sure to have this auto record feature turned on so that when I power on the microphone and I'm getting audio, I know I'm getting a backup recording. That way there's no chance of me losing the audio. And because I get 11 hours out of each transmitter, I could record the entire day and it's not that big a deal because you're never filming for 11 hours. Now with the auto record turned on, you could still turn off the recording once it's powered on. So if you don't have your record stop lock turned on, you press this button, it's gonna stop the recording. So you'll just wanna make sure if you want to, if you always want this on and you always want this recording to make sure to turn on both settings so that there's no chance of you pressing the side button and turning off the recording. Now in the transmitter menu, when you swipe right, the next option is for your storage. You'll click this and it's gonna show the storage each transmitter when they're connected. So you'll see on transmitter one, I have 11.2 hours of time left to record. And then on transmitter two, I have 9.6 hours. And so if you ever need to clear the data on the transmitter, transmitters, you'll just click which transmitter you want to clear. It'll bring up a format menu and then you'll swipe to the right and it's going to format that transmitter. Just make sure that you have your audio pulled off before you transmit it because you're deleting everything. The next option in your menu is for vibration notification. So your transmitters have haptic feedback and you'll notice when you're playing around with them, they're vibrating. So they'll vibrate when they power on, they'll vibrate when they start and stop recording. And so it's just a quick indication that something has happened with the transmitter when the vibration is turned on. Now, if you're someone who wants to turn these vibrations off and you don't want to have that haptic feedback, you'll just go in here to vibration notification and turn this off. Now also, these transmitters have LED lights on both sides. And if you're in a situation where you don't want to see the LED lights, say you have it mounted here on your shirt or it's somewhere like under the shirt and the lights are showing through, well, you'll want to turn off these LED indicators. And the last option on the transmitter menu is for the LED indicators and you have the option to turn it on or off. And so you could have this go completely dark so you don't see the green and the red light when you're recording your videos. Now that's everything in your transmitter settings and there's one last menu that you can go to in the receiver. So when you click the settings icon, the gear icon, you'll have a few options here. The first is for the brightness. And so this is the brightness of your screen. You have your language option. You have your date and time. You have a factory reset option. You have a version option. And then you have some compliance info. And so the firmware version that I'm currently working on is 42113. So if there are any additional options in the menu, you might be working on a newer firmware option. But at the time of recording this video, this is the firmware version I'm currently working with. And so that's everything that you have access to in the menus on the receiver and how all of it works. All right, now let's go over one of the most important sections when it comes to working with these microphones, and that is workflow. If you don't have your microphone set up properly, well, you're not gonna get the best audio. And also, if you don't have the placement right of where you're putting your microphone, your audio might suffer. So let's just go through step-by-step step how you would set these up and how you would start using them. So the first thing you wanna do is set your transmitter levels. So we're gonna turn on the DJI mic, and I'm not gonna connect it to a camera yet. All I wanna do is figure out where the level should be for the transmitter volume or the transmitter gain. So what you wanna do first is set up your microphone where you're gonna have your microphone. You don't wanna test it like this because that's not where the microphone's gonna live the whole time you're using it. Rather, if you're gonna be putting on your shirt, on a backpack or some other device, or you have it set down here, or maybe it's above you, depending on how you wanna have it set up, well, you wanna put it in that placement and then you wanna do an audio test. So I'm gonna just mount this onto my shirt using the magnet and it's gonna be on the outside of my shirt. If you're planning to put this on the inside of your shirt, you'd wanna do it with it inside of your shirt. 
So now what you want to do is look at your levels and turn on the settings that you're going to be using. So for me, I'm going to turn on 32 bit float. And then because I'm only using one transmitter, I'm going to put it in mono and I'm not going to be using the intelligent noise canceling. So this is how the screen should be set up. Now what I want to do is start talking and look at where my levels are. If my levels are hitting too low, then I'm going to have to bring up the gain of the transmitter. So you click in twice on the front of your receiver and then you can bring it down. Now, if your audio is too low, you're going to want to bring it up until you're hitting just in the orange but you don't want to be constantly in the orange so you could see it's in the orange right now and it's hitting a little bit too high so i'm going to bring it back down to zero and for me this is hitting in a good spot so with the way that I talk, zero should be fine. And for most of us, zero should be fine. Unless you're in a situation where you're holding the microphone closer or you're a very loud talker, well, then you might bring this volume down. Or maybe if the microphone's a little bit further away, well, then you're gonna boost the signal. So for me, you can see the microphone's hitting at a good spot. So I'm gonna keep it at zero. So now the transmitter set up how I'm gonna shoot with it. So the next step would be to put it on your camera. And we're gonna set up the gain for the camera so that you're getting better audio out of your camera. And right here I have the a7S III. So I'm gonna turn this on so you could start seeing how the audio is being recorded. So right now you could see right here on the screen, the audio is being recorded too high, but we know that the transmitter is where it needs to be for the recording. So I need to set my receiver gain and I need to bring it down or I need to bring the internal audio of my camera down because there's different ways that you can adjust your audio depending on which device you're adjusting it on. Now for a lot of cameras, especially older models, you'll actually wanna bring the volume down in your camera because you'll hear some noise if you bring your volume too high. So what you do is you bring the volume down in your camera as low as possible and then boost the signal out of the DJI receiver so that you're hitting at proper levels. So let's do that right now. So I'm here in my camera, I'm gonna to go to my menu and you can see that I'm recording at a level of 25 and you can see how loud this is on the meters. It's just gonna be peaking and it's gonna be distorting. That's getting all the way to the right. When you're setting your audio levels, you want it anywhere between negative six and negative 12. That's kind of the sweet spot of where you're gonna get better audio so it's not too quiet, but it's also not too loud. So I'm gonna bring down my camera all the way down to one and now the now the audio meters are only hitting at negative 40 to negative 20. So this is where you would then boost the signal out of the receiver. So I'm gonna press in once on the DJI Mic 2 receiver. It's gonna highlight the top of the screen and I'm going to add some volume coming out of the receiver. I've bumped it up to plus nine and it's hitting just around negative 12, a little bit higher than negative 12. So this would be a good spot to set my audio. I would err on the side of pushing more towards negative 12 than pushing past negative six and being up towards negative three to zero. Because once you hit that upper limit, that's when your voice starts distorting and that's where you get issues with audio. If it's recorded too low and you have to bring it up in post, you'll just add some noise into the sound, but you can remove that using a noise filter. It's not ideal. However, it's better than having your audio distorted on the high end. So you wanna hit between negative six, negative 12. That's where your aim. And I have my receiver set to plus nine. My transmitter is set to zero and on my camera, it's set to one. Now, if we go into the settings for the receiver and click recommended camera settings and go to Sony A7S Mark III and then turn that on, you'll see that now I got the exact same settings. My transmitter's at zero and my receiver's at plus nine. And you'll see on the camera, I'm hitting at the proper levels. It's just going above negative 12, between negative 12 and negative six. So if your camera is listed by the DJI receiver, you can easily just go into the receiver to set it up that way and just set your camera levels to where it needs to go. So on the a7S III, you have to go to one and then you put on the a7S III in the receiver and you're getting proper levels. And so DJI has already set this up for a lot of cameras, but not every camera is in the receiver. And so this is the process you're gonna go through if you wanna do it manually. So let's talk about a few ways that you're gonna mount the DJI mic to get good audio. This is the first, just mounting it right on your shirt with the magnet behind. Now you could switch this up and go the other way. So if you wanna put the microphone on the inside and put the little magnet on the outside. Well, it might be a little bit cleaner that way and all you have is this little magnet. And if this is a little bit too shiny, you could put a little piece of tape on it. Now this is another way you can mount it with the same magnet. Now another way is to use one of these magnetic lanyards. This is one that I have from the Insta360 Go 3 and this is just a little pendant that goes under the shirt and this will mount directly to it. So if you have one of these pendants or you wanna get some sort of necklace, this might be an easy way to do it because when you're using a pendant like this, you're not pulling on your shirt. Sometimes the weight of the DJI Mic 2 transmitter will pull on your shirt weird and it won't look as good. 
In that situation, I would just use one of these lanyards. Makes it super easy. Now, personally, when I'm out shooting, a lot of times I'm using a backpack. And in those times, I actually just attach it directly to my backpack straps. So I have my yellow Shimoda backpack here, and I will mount this right here on the front. There's a little loop here, and I could easily just put it right here in my backpack strap, and it's right at chest height. I could attach it anywhere on this center strap, and now I know I'm gonna have clean audio when I'm out recording. Now, another way that I could do it is put it up here in one of these pockets. So right here on the left or right here on the right. For this specific backpack, I have these two pockets and it could work there as well. The DJI Mic 2 transmitter is an omnidirectional mic. So if you put it anywhere in the vicinity of where you're talking, you're gonna get the same audio. The one thing you have to keep in mind though is if it's on one of your straps on either side or on your clothing to the side at all, if you turn your head, the audio is not gonna be as clean. So when you're talking forward, it's fine, but as soon as you turn your head, well, you're not gonna hear the audio the same out of this microphone. And when you turn this way, it's gonna get more intense, it's gonna be a little bit louder, and it's gonna sound a little different. So that's one, one reason I don't use the straps as much anymore. And I try to keep it right here in the center on this strap. Now, another way to use these microphones is to use a lavalier mic. This is the one that DJI has. And you just plug it directly into the top of the microphone. You can hide this in a pocket on your belt, just on your clothing somewhere. And then all you have to do is attach the microphone up to the collar of your shirt or to your backpack or to somewhere else. This way you don't have as big of device somewhere visible and you just have the little microphone with the cable. Now I work with a lot of fitness clients and I'll use an over the ear headset mic and I run it the same way. So I keep the microphone just tucked in on their pants on the back where you don't see it. And then the over the ear microphone goes on their head because when you're shooting fitness, it's not that big a deal to show an over the ear microphone and you always have super clean audio. So if you are someone who is doing fitness kind of content, I highly suggest getting an over the ear microphone. It makes a huge difference when you're shooting that kind of content because it's more important that you have clean audio than having a hidden mic. Now, another way that you could use this microphone is for voiceover work. So you could use the windscreen, put it on top of the microphone, use this as a pop filter, and then you could just talk to it like this. Now, this will work and it will be easy to get audio, but if you want to make sure that you have it consistent and you have no reverb or anything like that, well, you could get something like this. This is just a little audio cove that's made for voiceover work. And so what I've done is I put a little ball mount here where a microphone would go and the magnet just attaches right on here. And now I could use this as a voiceover booth. So here is a voiceover audio sample using the DJI mic with the windscreen on in my little acoustic foam corner. And I put this on my desk whenever I'm making a video and it just makes it super easy to be able to capture my voiceover audio and just use the 32 bit float backup recording on the transmitter knowing I'm always gonna have clean audio whenever I'm doing one of these voiceovers. And then I can turn on the noise reduction even more if I don't wanna do any processing in post. And this is the sound of the voiceover with the intelligent noise canceling in my little voiceover booth. Now, if you're not doing voiceover work and you're doing say talking head like this here, well, you could put this microphone on yourself or you could set it on the desk if you're not gonna hit the desk or you're not gonna hit the microphone. Now, personally, when I'm using these microphones, a lot of times I'll keep it on me as my main audio source. If I don't wanna rely on a shotgun microphone on top of my camera, then I'll use a DJI mic too and I'll put it on my chest or I'll put it on my backpack just so I always have clean audio and it's always gonna be consistent. Now, whenever I'm doing my videos, I also like to walk away from camera and that's a huge advantage of working with a wireless microphone system. You could get yourself away from camera and not always have to be so tied directly to your camera to get clean audio. This way you could set the camera down on a tripod, walk away, get a distance and you still have a clean audio no matter what the shot is. And when I've worked on some different documentary projects, there's a lot of times where I wanna do some, some different shots where I'm not always right there with the camera and I wanna be a little bit distance away. And that's where something like the DJI Mic 2 comes into play and just makes the whole process so much easier because you have the audio tied directly to your camera, but then also you're doing the backup recording so you never have to worry about losing the audio with whatever's going on. And so the way that I use it when I'm working with two people is I'll put it in the stereo mode and then I'll also use the backup recording. That way I have complete control over all of the audio tracks to be able to edit them, bring them in, bring them out, and so that I have no issues of mixing the sounds if I was to use the mono mode. Now, another way that you could use these as just is just a standalone recorder. So like I said, I use this for voiceover work and I'll just use this as a standalone recorder when I'm doing that. But also if you wanna get environmental sounds, you wanna get some ambience, maybe there's some sound effects that you need to capture when you're out filming. Well, you could just use one of these microphones 
as a recorder and grab those sounds. And one other way that's really useful to using the DJI Mic 2 is hook it to your computer. Because of the Bluetooth functionality with the Mic 2, you can hook this directly to your computer. And so if you're doing, say, a live stream, well, you could use your audio from your DJI Mic 2, put it on your chest or put it somewhere else, and you could always have clean, consistent audio. Also, you could use it for something like video calls. So if you're on Zoom or something like that, and you're just having a video call, well, you never have to worry about your audio when you're using the DJI Mic 2, and it just makes the whole process that much easier. So a ton of features packed into the DJI Mic 2, and they give you a lot of flexibility to be able to use these in a variety of settings. And if you're gonna be using the DJI Mic 2 for your YouTube channel, then check out my free course that I've put together on how to grow a YouTube channel and all of the different things you need to think about. It's over on my website called The Creator Film School, and I'll include a link to that free course down below in the description. And next, you should check out this video right here, which goes through my nine shot formula that gives you a roadmap on what to shoot when you're out filming and so that you always have enough B-roll for your edit. I'll see you over there.